Yo, Joes, what's up everybody? Uh, this is the very exciting tabletop where we are going to review the art of G.I. Joe, a real American hero. So what we have done over the last couple, I'd say month, has been reviewing the art of G.I. Joe, a real American hero uh, from the factory that is working on production in Hong Kong. So this is going to be a pretty extensive review of the Art of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. So we got in a bunch of wet proof prints. I did a Facebook Live where I reviewed all these. They looked phenomenal. I signed off on that. We also got a bunch of the uh, gatefold spreads, of course, which looked beautiful. And so I signed off on that, made any necessary revisions. And they gave me lower quality proofs to review for uh, the dust jacket. the cover itself, the end sheets, which start and end with people enjoying their toys at Christmas time. That's the closing spread. So really cool way to start and finish the book. Thank you to everybody that contributed. They also sent, uh, this is a rough draft of the clamshell case and this is a high quality digital print that approximates what the CMYK would look like, CMYK being offset lithograph. So this was a beautiful case, but it was just slightly off. You can see the line right here is supposed to be on the edge. Uh, it's about a quarter or an eighth of an inch uh, slid to the right. So we've revised that. They sent me a, another box that was four position only, so not as high quality of a print, but adjusted so that that's got the correct spacing. So just little details like that we've been hashing out over the last month or two. All final files have been uh, turned in and have been approved. So they are full steam ahead on production. Um, this is the 712 page kind of lower quality print. Uh, this was the dust jacket. This is the cover. Just to show like where things are gonna fall, where the folds are gonna happen. This is the folder. Uh, there's a bunch of prints inside that folder. There's 24 prints there, 12 backers choice, 12 editors choice. They also have the uh, clamshell case uh, proofs. And I've already reviewed, revised, uploaded, uh, got a second print from them and approved that revised print. So we are done with all that. Now, the last thing they sent me previously that I reviewed on Facebook Live over the course of a couple hours was a full 712 page review. This is the entire book right? This is all lower quality prints, but it did have the uh, double gatefold spreads and everything in here. So this was the first time that I had seen our eight years worth of work and really, you know, a year and a half worth of design layout and writing work that's been completed since doing the Kickstarter and growing the scale of this book exponentially. All that work had to be done. Uh, we did the original soft covers more at like an eight and a half by 11 uh, size and this is 13 and a half inches wide by 14 and a half inches tall. Uh, so you couldn't just take the files from the soft cover and scale them up. This was all bitmap, so you would have a loss of resolution there. So literally all 712 pages have been redesigned. This is a completely new book. There is a, you know, similar assets from the soft covers, but everything here has been laid out and built from scratch in the last year and a half. So we could not possibly have worked any harder on this. Uh, shout out to my partner, Chad Huckle, for all the amazing photo image restoration work. He has put his heart and soul into this book, just like me. And uh, you know, you can't rush perfection. And I'll say it, man. I mean, we're getting ready to look at the FEP, which is basically like a final, final engineering pilot before they go into mass production. And you know, judging by the wet proofs that I've already seen and the 712 page, basically this is like an inkjet print that, that you're seeing here. And based on the digital print that I did locally, this thing is perfect. I, I could not, I'm at a place where I'm completely comfortable hitting print on this and walking away from the production side of things and just getting into, you know, really trying to go out there and convert people that are, 
you know, somewhat on the fence about GI Joe. Obviously, every all you guys that are subscribed to 3D Joe's that are signed up to the 3D Joe's newsletter, you guys already are lifelong Joe fans. You you sought out GI Joe and you got on the list and you know you've been plugged in. And I couldn't thank you enough um, for following our our journey as we've documented this stuff. But you're the low hanging fruit, so to speak. And so now it's going to be time for me to get out there and go to some conventions that aren't GI Joe based and you know, kind of pound the ground and shake some trees and remind people how awesome G.I. Joe, a real American hero is. So this book is uh, completely approved uh, by Hasbro. It's licensed. They've already reviewed everything. We've made any requested revisions. Um, and so this is, you know, this is legit. This is the real deal. This is the one and only uh, G.I. Joe retail art book that you'll need. It's every single piece of painted artwork from 1982 to 1994 in one big, in one big book. Uh, this is 712 pages, again, 13 and a half by 14 and a half inches. It is seven, there's 75,000 words in here. I had four proofreaders going through and reviewing everything for me. And so, yeah, this is, this is a big chunk of my life right here. It's a big chunk of Chad's life too. And a smaller chunk of, you know, people like Kirk Bazigian that pro provided all these interludes is what I'm calling them in here, but they were forwards on the soft covers. Uh, the proofreaders that, that work so diligently through the 75,000 words, uh, every collector that has provided us with assets um, that has connected me with people selling paintings so I could acquire and scan and photograph those in the highest quality, that has connect, connected me with Kodachromes, uh, that has connected me with uh, Kodak photo print proofs so that we could scan and restore those and add those to the book. So I'm just going to skip ahead. This is the whole 712 page kind of inkjet um, proof. This is what we reviewed a couple weeks ago. So as you can see, it is exhaustive. Everything is in here, every file card for every figure. Now, we don't have all the variants of the file cards. That would just be ridiculous. Come on, guys. But we do have one version of each file card for each character. Even those characters towards the end that were just product photography, um, like the Star Brigade Power Fighters, for example. This is a nice spread by Ron Rudat, where he came back in December of 1992 and helped design the out-of-this-world figures that ended up being the 1994 Star Brigade figures. So I like to say that Ron was there from the beginning to the end, from 1981 when they were ramping up for 82 to 1992 where they were designing stuff for 94. This is the unreleased stuff that was slated to come out in late 1994 and early to mid-1995. A lot of cool stuff that got canceled. Anyway, um, and then there's a uh, tribute it's dedicated to my father. He was a Green Beret Airborne Ranger. And also some a surprise little spread of international artwork and the thank you to the backers. So that was the low resolution kind of inkjet quality review of the book. So I made any final changes that I needed to make based on reviewing those. And the uh, printer sent me stuff to, to sign off on that and I've done that. And so now we're at the stage where we have what's called a a final engineering pilot, basically, in toy language. This is the last look at what the actual mass-produced product is going to look like. So let me put this camera on a stand, and we'll get, in. we'll get into it. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Let me know how the sound is. Got a new microphone system, and I think that should help things sound a little bit better. Turn this stand, try to get that oriented properly. All right, so I've got a brand new box from Hong Kong. You can hear how heavy this is. This is one book. It is 20 pounds. Now I'm working with the factory right now to determine the final packing configuration. And I'm actually getting ready to send them another $30,000 so that each book is double boxed. And each book will have foam corner inserts to protect the integrity of the corners of all those clamshell cases. So uh, I think I've already said a couple times, I'm well in the hole on this project 
totally fine because I completely ble uh, believe in it. So look at this, guys. Something punched a mega hole in this box and it went through one layer, two layers, three layers into the bubble wrap. So why would I pay for double boxing? This right here is exactly why I'm paying 30 grand for double boxing, right? This is exactly why, because this is a $150 product. Uh, I don't want it ruined like that. So I'm paying an extra 30 grand out of pocket. I'm sure I'll recover it because I'm getting extra copies printed, so no worries. I'm not, I'm not saying that like woe is me. Uh, I'm just wanting you guys to know that I'm sparing no expense to make sure that this product is amazing when it gets to your house. Because what's the point working on something for eight years if it's not perfect when it gets to you? All right, so let's check this out. Um, let's see. I'll try to answer questions really quick. Matthew, uh, I'm on the first page spreads with my snowcat. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Thank you, Matthew, for submitting your photo. Uh, can't wait for my copy. Thanks for all your guys' efforts. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate that. I really appreciate y'all's patience while we got it perfect. Congratulations on getting made. Thank you so much, Aaron. Appreciate it. Let's see. It's kind of hard to see these comments. Pages will be glossy. Absolutely. Boba Wave. Absolutely. Pages will be glossy. That was a, this was like an inkjet review copy that I just went through. So let's, let's keep scrolling. You're going to see the, the nice quality here. So looks so awesome. Thank you. I really want one of those, but shipping will be expensive, especially international. Yeah, no doubt. Shipping is going to be expensive internationally, but you know what? It's going to be completely worth it. In the United States, I'm going to be able to use media mail. Uh, because this is a publication with no advertising in it. So I think in the United States, I'll be able to get this ship for 20 bucks. Internationally, there's no way around it. It is going to be pricey. But again, it'll be totally worth it. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Mark, yeah, I've, I've heard quite a few people tell me that, that this will be a replacement for their carded or, or mint and box stuff. And, uh, you know, I don't think it will for me. I just enjoy so much having that, um, having that collection in my Toys R Us. So the reason you guys are seeing a glossy reflection of the ring light on this box set right here is because for the first time you're seeing a final engineering pilot, FEP basically, uh, of what this is gonna look like when it comes out of the box to you. And so what you'll note here is that it's shrink wrapped. Why is it shrink wrapped? Well. Glad you asked. It is shrink wrapped because there's a barcode on here for retail. And I didn't want that to junk up the design. So what I decided to do was shrink wrap this whole collection and put the barcode on the outside of the shrink wrap. So <sighs> this is it, man. This is the final quality product. I am kind of speechless, guys. This is crazy. I cannot believe Chad and I have been working on this for this long. And this is kind of the first look at the final product. So yeah, if you hear me sniffling over here, it's it's uh, tears of joy. So anyway, uh, this is amazing. This is based on the 1982 collector case using the original uh, Kodachrome. Justin Talton, thank you for that. Every piece of original artwork, I remember where I got it and I've got gratitude for the people that connected me with it. Um, so the, yeah, this is the box. Omnibus hardcover by R. Carson Metaxas and Chad Huckle. I finally got him to, you know, take the byline on the cover and he deserves it. He's put in hundreds. He's actually put in a couple thousand hours worth of work. We were tracking it on the first couple soft covers and it was about 400 hours per book for each of us. And uh, so Chad's given thousands of hours to this. This is the uh, back of the clamshell case. It shows you the art portfolio that's inside with the 12 backers choice prints and the 12 editors choice prints. It also teases that there's a 712 page book in there. And of course it plays off the old language on the old collector case. So if that seems cheesy, that's by design because we're emulating that case and the language that they used. And then it's also teasing the pocket patrol style pack of interviews that we filmed with the original creators of the brand. So there is that. Everything looks amazing. All right, let's get in the case. So the case itself has a magnetic clasp. So you can hear the clasp right there. And that's magnetic. It kind of gets back in its place. So to open it, you simply peel that and open this up. 
All right, and then on the left-hand side, you have credits for basically myself, Chad, and Brian Sauer, who did the design of the clamshell case, as well as the pocket patrol pack. And then Doug Hart was the internal Hasbro painter, illustrator. So I'll slide that down. All right, and then you'll notice right here a red, white, and blue ribbon. So to get your book out, you're gonna lift that ribbon up. But before we get into this, I wanted to show you guys one more thing. This is the portfolio that comes with it. So this is super glossy. This is like an old school uh, portfolio kind of school folder that you take to you know elementary school, middle school when we were collecting GI Joes. As you can see, super glossy. It's the 1986 catalog art painted by Hector Garrido. So that is absolutely beautiful. You open that up and you've got the 24 prints and I'm just gonna go through them. Uh, you can see super glossy black on the inside. It's got the backer's choice kind of index right there. And then it's got the editor's choice index right there along the bottom. All right, so we have Stars and Stripes to the Rescue by Ron Rudat. Stars and Stripes Forever, excuse me, by Ron Rudat, who was the figure designer at the time. This is the To the Rescue print. Unknown artist, and we write a lot of words about that inside as to why this guy is still unknown. Uh, we have taken every effort to you know, properly credit everybody we can. The collector display case artwork. And 1982 Snake Eyes. 1983 Destro. 1984 Baroness. The Cobra Water Moccasin. 1984 as well. So as you can see, these are all thick cardstock and glossy. The Killer Whale, 1984 as well. 1984 Storm Shadow, a lot of great stuff from 1984. All of this was painted by Hector Garrido, of course. 1985 Catalog Artwork by Garrido. 1985 Snake Eyes and Timber. 1986 Vipers. So that was the backer's choice. Those were vote, voted on by the Kickstarter backers. And so that's where those 12 selections came from. Now for the editor's choice, I wanted to give it a little more variety and, and show more of a cross section of the artists that worked on the brand. So you'll see some less predictable stuff here. This is by Bart Doe. This is the train set that was put together by Tyco. You have Snow Job, 1983. Blowtorch, 1984. You know, we just picked some of our favorites. Scrap Iron, 1984. Spirit, 1984. A lot of 84 stuff. 1987 catalog art, the very first piece painted by Doug Hart, who was Hasbro's, Hasbro's internal painter. Uh, first worked on My Little Pony, came over to lead uh, G.I. Joe later. Uh, this is by Earl Norm. This was the accessory pack from 1988. This was a book cover by Earl Norm as well. Norm actually did quite a few pieces for G.I. Joe, and you'll learn about that in the book if you don't already know. Uh, 1990 catalog, or excuse me, uh, mural puzzle artwork by Doug Hart. This was not released in the United States. Doug Hart painted it for Milton Bradley, and it, it rolled out overseas. This is the 1990 general, cesspool, Vinnie DeLivia, and an unreleased C-set also by Doug Hart. So that is the 24 print set. Those are the editor's choice. Here's a look at the thickness. And again, this is a manufactured sample. This is going to be just like what you guys get. So top quality, we spared no expense. I raised $393,000 for this book and I sent $460,000 to the publisher to create awesome, thick, glossy folder, thick pages for all the prints. This was all just bonus material that we added during the Kickstarter. So, you know, with the book doing as well as it did, everybody gets a little better product. So thank you guys for backing and sharing wide far. So here's the book. Now this is a scuff proof uh, cover. So this will not uh, retain fingerprints as much as something like that glossy folder would. All right, so you pull up on this ribbon right here and this is how you get your book out. It's literally that simple. I know some people are gonna be like, oh my God, how do I get that book out of there? It's really okay. Just put this ribbon right back in there when you're done with it, right? And just drop it down in there and you're done. It's that easy. So uh, grab your ribbon, your red, white, and blue. And for G.I. Joe, a real American hero, obviously, they were very proud of the, uh, 
you know, the red, white, and blue in the logo. So you have those action lines right there. Let me get this out of the way. So underneath the book itself, you have more characters that are representative of the uh, creators that have been interviewed and that are discussed throughout this book. So Bob Lavoie was a packaging illustrator brought over in 1990 to work in the art department with Doug Hart. Bill Merkline was a sculptor, uh, worked from 1984 to 1990. His first, uh, actually I'm sure he started in 83 because his first figure that he sculpted was Ricondo. Guy Cassidy, the big vehicle designer, he also designed small vehicles, but he's best known for the large vehicles that he designed. Ed Morrill, the packaging uh, executive that was hired by Hasbro in 1969 to revamp G.I. Joe for the 1970 uh, toy fair and to roll out the adventure team. He was uh, in charge of the packaging company that handled the rebrand and relaunch of Super Joe, as well as G.I. Joe, a real American hero in 1982 and the revised branding in 1986. Larry Hama, everybody knows him. He's the comic book author. He wrote the file cards. He turned these plastic figures into personalities. Ron Rudette, who designed the first 115 or so figures. Mark Pennington, who took over after Ron got off the brand in 1986. Mark Pennington picked up where he left off and designed basically almost all the figures from 1986 to 1989. Kurt Bazigian, who was the original brand manager for G.I. Joe, a real American hero, a pivotal figure in the relaunch of the brand, and he came back as vice president of the Boys Toys in 1990 and helped revitalize the brand in 1990, brought Vinny DeLivia over from Transformers, and Kirk Bazigian was there basically from the beginning to the end. So he's an amazing authority on G.I. Joe, a real American hero. All right, so we'll get the clamshell case out of there. Not quite as heavy with all the stuff out of it, but still pretty solid box. All right. Now we're gonna look at the book. It's book time. Let's do it. So I'm gonna try to zoom in just a little bit more. Let's see if I can lower this down. There we go. Okay. Hopefully you guys can hear me, hear me okay. I'm gonna check these comments real quick. That's amazing. Uh, Baba Wave, thank you for telling me that you heard about it through Michael Mercy. Uh, he's obviously a friend of 3D Joe's and I appreciate everything he's done to help get the word out. So, all right, we're gonna open the cover and like I was telling you before, we have the in sheets. So the dust jacket wraps around, it's got about four inches of overlap, right? That wrap around the inside of the front cover. It's got the same thing on the back side. Now, if you take that off, you'll see that the dust jacket so I'm gonna remove this from the book. I'm gonna also try not to kind of damage anything while I'm doing this. But the dust jacket on the inside, as you can see, has removed all branding. So if you wanna hang this as a poster, it's pretty incredible. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. I mean, this thing is huge too, guys, because this is about two and a half, three inches, and then the cover is 13 and a half on each side, 13 and a half, 13 and a half, and then an extra four. Let's do the math really quick. 13 and a half plus 13 and a half is 27, plus three, we'll say, yeah, 30, and then add eight for the flaps right here. So we'll say 38, this is about 38 inches all the way across the left side to the right side, and that's uh, 14 and a half inches tall like the rest of the book. So here's a look at the dust jacket, pulling it off. One second, I'm gonna set this book down. You guys bear with me. Okay, this is my one and only copy, so I wanna make sure I don't mess it up. All right, now this is the uh, exterior of the cover with the branding on the spine and the credits on the front and the branding at the top right. So this is a look at the exterior of the dust jacket and it's thick. I think it's 80 pound paper. It's very, very nice. And this is the inside with the branding removed. And it looks just phenomenal. All right, so I'm gonna set this dust jacket aside. Thank you to everybody who voted for who you wanted to see featured on that. And I'm happy that we were able to do the unbranded version of it for the interior. Now, here's the book with the dust jacket removed. Because I know some people prefer to get rid of dust jackets so that they don't get wrinkled while you read it. So here is the art of G.I. Joe, Real American Hero. This is the spine design with Storm Shadow, obviously Snake Eyes and Timber, and the uh, credits for me and Chad. 
Here's the front of the book. And here's the rear of the book. Looking good, guys. So when you, when you hold it up right like this, everywhere that you see a little bit of a gap in there, that's because that is a double, like a double gatefold spread. There will be a big spread there. So if you wanna skip ahead to the double gatefold spreads, all you have to do is hold your book up like this, rub your thumb through here and kind of open it on the double gatefold spreads. They should be easy enough to find like that. Now, before we go into the book, I wanna call out that the threaded binding itself right here is red to match the red, white, and blue of the ribbon. So we really care. Uh, we've gotten into the details. Here is the bookmark with the same red, white, and blue ribbon. As you can see, the red, white, and blue of the logo there. So there is a theme, you know, throughout this book. And you guys can guess what it is. Real American Hero. All right, so we open this up, and you've got the double spread, the two-page spread of people opening their toys at Christmas. And the reason we wanted to open the book with this was this is why it matters. This is why thousands of you got behind this project. This is why Chad and I dedicated years of our lives to this. This is why the art of G.I. Joe, a real American hero matters because of the memories that we all share. So I'm going to get in. Uh, hopefully the phone won't die. This is going to be a long review. I'm going to shoot through the book and kind of tell you just a little bit of the stories, but I'll try to move through relatively quickly. And I might have to take breaks. We'll see. All right, here we go. Big moment. There's your, uh, there's your credits. And uh, yeah, there's uh, thank yous to everybody that contributed major stuff. Thank you to everybody that uh, participated in the interviews. Here's who did the work. Here's who participated interviews. Here's who contributed assets. Um, that kind of thing. Special thanks to these people that have given significant chunks of time to 3D Joe's to help document our favorite brand. And uh, yeah, published by Locomotion Media Group, which is my company since 2015. Um, obviously, I've been running 3djoes.com. Everything runs through Locomotion and licensed by Hasbro. So there's all your appropriate credits. And here is the opening spread. Now, this has Kirk Bazigian's uh, forward on uh, packaging the G.I. Joe uh, uh, product and why they made some of the decisions they did. Obviously, there's a huge close-up of the collector case here. Now, if you see a close-up like that, don't sweat that like you're not gonna see that piece again. You will, every piece that we use for, I call this an extreme close-up, every piece that we use for an extreme close-up like this, we also show it in its entirety. So there is no piece that is, that is basically cropped and not shown uh, kind of fully. So just know that, you know, if you see extreme close-ups, that doesn't mean you're not gonna see it fully. All right. I think what I want to do is turn it this way. And then I'm going to go live with a horizontal aspect ratio. That makes by far the most sense. So the, the 27 of you that are joining me right now, join me again in just a couple minutes. We're going to switch the aspect ratio and do this book review, all 700 pages. Let's go.